today I want to focus on the other type of worship. It's a little bit more specific. It's the musical side of worship. I'm going to say praise and worship, but really I'm going to talk just as that, about that as a whole today. One thing as worship. Pastor Dave used to say this all the time, take a people to a place. When you see somebody singing on a stage, I want you to hear this and understand it. They are not there to be seen. They are your Uber driver for the day. And they are there to take you to the destination of God's presence and encounter the true of God. It does not matter whether or not you can sing. The King of Kings is worthy of your praise. It builds relationship with God. Psalm 22 says that God inhabits the praises of his people. When you worship, his presence comes and he builds relationship with you. Jesus said it this way in Matthew 18, 20, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Listen, something happens in the corporate environment of worship where not only does God's presence come down and he begins to connect and build relationship with you, but it strengthens the body. That's why the Bible says to have the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. third thing that worship is, it's really just warfare. And that's really that key that David had locked in on. Worship is warfare. When you sing these words, you're singing words that people have written based upon scripture. And when you sing that, what you're doing is you're prophesying the word of God over your life and over the lives of people around you. You declare to the enemy what God has spoken over your life instead of what the enemy is trying to do in your life all around you. That's the power of worship as a Don't take your spirit from me. 
Awesome. Tonight, 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 every time we gather is a special night. Um, you know, many of you are probably already engaged in 21 days of prayer. We do that every January, every August. And we started adding a night of worship because we feel that the moment needs to come to this big gathering corporately, just entering the presence of God. And so uh, we had looked ahead on the calendar to tonight and put it on, but this is not a date on a calendar. <laughs> There's natural planning, but we believe God had orchestrated everything leading up to this night. Amen? 
We believe he had a, a plan and a purpose bringing all of us together for tonight. I want to share just a few things in my heart before we get in uh, to the night. And, but let me welcome, there's a lot of other churches here tonight. I invited some of our friends. So, hey, let's give everybody thanks for coming tonight. I don't know where you're at, where you're coming from, but thank you. And that's, that's, that's part of what's special tonight, how the body can come together, amen, and enter into a night of worship. And I want to I say this, tonight is a night of worship. This isn't a concert. I believe we're going to enjoy the presence of the Lord, amen, and we're going to just have a, a great time. But I also believe there's going to be these moments that we just feel like we're just right in the middle of the presence of God. And he's speaking directly to us individually. And it'll land on us all differently, but we want to encourage everybody just to respond to him as you respond to God. Amen. And then I feel like there's this moment tonight where God will just meet you exactly where you are because he planned for you to be here. I was sharing uh, with Karen in the back room about tonight and things that were on my heart leading up to tonight. If you had been at Tree Life for the last few weeks, uh, we just celebrated 41 years of being a Tree Life to Lost and Hurting World. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. And every marking of that like releases something new, right? If you're open and pressing into what God has. And so typically when we have a 21 days of prayer, God drops something in our heart for the next season. And the word for me, uh, for tree, um, and I believe for the body, is anointed, anointing. And uh, that's a great word, and I don't I want to talk about it all tonight, but I believe that, that God's releasing a, a, an anointing, a greater anointing in those who are positioned to receive that from him and to step out into this new season. And so we've been talking the last few weeks here at Tree about when David was anointed king, because he said at one point in time in 2 Samuel, I am weak, today I am weak, yet I am anointed king. Meaning no matter what's going on in your life and the time that we live in and you're experiencing, if you've surrendered your heart and life to Jesus, you are still anointed. And tonight is a night that I believe we're going to experience a, a fresh anointing of God. Amen? Those that would open their heart up to receive and press into this time of worship, position yourself. And in that passage of Scripture, David was saying that it was, it was, he was uh, years after he had been anointed. And then I went back to where he was anointed and Samuel the prophet came from Jerusalem because God said, get up and go anoint one of Jesse's sons king. So he left Jerusalem and he went to Bethlehem. And then there were seven sons, and you probably know the story, and, and none of them were the ones that God had said, how about this one, how about, they all looked very kingly, but none of them were that. And then the prophet said, do you have another son? And they said, yeah, we have one out in the field. And he said, send for him. And that just jumped off the page at me because I believe tonight God sent for you. <laughs> I mean, you may have just come because somebody invited you, but for me, I want to say this for me, God sent for me tonight. God sent for me to be here tonight because he has an anointing he wants to release in a greater measure. And so as David came, David came from the field. The prophet Samuel came from Jerusalem. David came from the field. Our wonderful guest that is, has an anointing on her life that I believe she's going to release tonight as we're going to receive came from Florida. You came from your field. We had to all come together as part of God's plan, amen, to get in alignment. And so then as that he went through and was looking at each one. He looked on the outward appearance. There was very kingly looking young men that Jesse had. And, and I want to encourage you tonight that you may come feeling uh, a, a one a certain way. You may be dressed up tonight. You may be excited for tonight. But what God's going to look at is not your outward appearance or the things that you're doing. He's going to look at your heart. Because when he gets to David, he's like, this is a man after God's own heart. It was David's heart that released the anointing on his life. And I want you to come tonight with an open heart to receive the anointing God wants to pour over you. David was the eighth son, and that's significant because we know the number eight means new beginning, a new fresh beginning, a fresh anointing, amen? So God sent for you. He has a new fresh anointing. You have to position yourself with your heart to receive so the oil will flow from the horn onto your life. The anointing will pour out. And the last thing I want to say is that it, it, what's interesting to me, another phrase in that passage, in the midst of his brothers, he was anointed. Meaning there were seven other people around him that did not get anointed. And I want to encourage you tonight, if you're the only one tonight that gets anointed, be that one. Don't worry about anybody else sitting around you. Don't worry about anybody else that came with you. That's, be that's between them and God. That, that means to me, out of eight people, only one positioned their heart to receive whatever God had. And I want to encourage you to be that one tonight. God sent for you. 
You are the one He wants to anoint tonight. Amen. He wants to give you a fresh anointing and for this new season that He has for you. And so I believe tonight is a night that that's going to be released for those who position their hearts to be in alignment with what God has. So let's all stand to our feet and let me say a quick prayer and get out of the way tonight. Father, we thank you for this moment. I believe, Father God, you sent for us. We were coming out of our fields tonight, wherever that is, Father God, and you brought our, our wonderful gift, our anointed gift, Father God, from halfway across the United States to meet tonight, to anoint tonight, Father God, to release an anointing, Father, to everyone that's positioned to receive. Tonight's a new anointing, a fresh anointing. We receive it, Father God. Pour out your spirit. Release your oil, Father God. Tonight's the night we step into a new anointing, Father God. And we believe it to be so in Jesus' name, amen.
voice in this room. Sing it out. Praise the
souls will do it with me. Are you ready? You gotta, you gotta follow me. We're gonna do a train. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna make a train and as we're singing fire and wind, come and do it again. You're gonna go all over this room, all over this room. And we're gonna ask the Spirit of the Lord to do it again over this church, over this region, over this city, over this state. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, let's assemble it. Let's go, ready? One, two, fire and wind. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven open.
presence. We want to be lovers of your presence. How many want to be lovers of his presence tonight? How many surrender it all tonight? Come on, open your voice. He said the room. He said the you to lift up your voice before we move on to any song it's not about the song we sing it's about how we worship the king of kings the one who deserves it Jesus Jesus so open your mouth open your mouth and give him an adoration like never before give him the worship like never before if he were to come today today if he were to come today how would you receive him tonight how would you receive him tonight so many people in this room I feel like that have needed, that have felt stuck and have needed something fresh. And the Lord tonight is giving that to you. And he says, even if you might not want to, he says, worship, because I will give that to you. I will give that freshness. He's releasing it. He's releasing it. He's releasing more. More, 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 more. Not as individuals only, but as a church. More, 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 more. More, 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 more. Receive it. your hands like this and say he's he's giving more he's giving more Woo, 
He's given more, more. Receive it, receive it, receive the more of the Lord. Receive the more, receive the more. Oh, He's given more, 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 more. He's given more, 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 more. Can you feel it? He's given more, 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 more. Can you receive it? He's given more, 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 more. More, 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 more. Every hand lifted up. Cada mano levantada. More, 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 more. It's a new season. More, 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 more. The city is not dry. He's giving more, more, more. I believe through this city, pastors, prophets, worship leaders will rise up like never before. This is not just any type of city. This is a city of revival. Revival starts here and it starts now. Woo! I promise you I'm trying to move on, but he's so tangible in this room. He's so tangible because there's people that are hungry. Let him fill you up tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so worthy isn't he worthy el es tan digno he's worthy to be worshipped there is no one like you I've searched all over couldn't find no one like you I looked all but it all pointed back to you.
you break for from you
Padre amado, amigo fiel, hermoso Dios, hermoso Dios, oh, oh, oh. Padre amado, díselo a Él, amigo Hermoso Dios, hermoso Dios, una cosa anhelo y es tu buscaré, es morar aquí para siempre, esta es mi postura, postrado a tus pies, quiero morar. Anhelo, una cosa anhelo y esto buscaré es mora para sí esta es mi postura esta es mi postura postrado a tus pies quiero morar aquí Dearest Father, closest, yeah, most beautiful, most beautiful, dearest Father, dearest Father, closest friend, closest friend, most beautiful, most beautiful.
Where's your voice? Breakthrough only happens when you open your mouth. Healing only takes place when you open your mouth. Restoration only takes place when you open your mouth. Open your mouth. Can you hear? 
Gen Z, I believe it. The sound, the sound. Woo! Gen Zer, I want you to lift up your hands if you identify as a Gen Z. <laughs> if you don't identify as a Gen Z, don't lift up your hands. <laughs> See the adults. <laughs> Every Gen Z in the room right now, lift up your hands. There's something special happening in the room for you guys. Our next generation, our prophets, our worship leaders, our preachers. Our pastors, our evangelists, <laughs> how do you say that word? The Lord is doing something tonight. I said the Lord is doing something tonight. So I want every hand lifted up over the Gen Z. Father, right now we pray over every young person in the room and we declare freedom. We come against any spirit that's been wanting to attack our generation. We declare freedom. We declare encounters. We declare encounters. We declare fire, 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 fire in their bellies, fire in their bellies, fire for the more, fire. Come on, lift up your voice. One last time, can you hear it? Can you hear? place your hands like this. I can only imagine what Pastor Don talked about earlier. King David, this stinky kid from the field, summoned by a prophet and the nerves that he must have felt. And the jitters, like, what could they want with me? I want to say to somebody today, he wants everything to do with you. I don't know what you came in carrying. I see it like a backpack, like you wear it everywhere you go. Like there's no backpack signs here, but you carry something even when there's not something visible. It could be a physical ailment, and it, it's kind of making you bend over, but it could be a, an emotional thing, and a, a spiritual thing, something that knocked you down in life and you've always kind of walked hunched over because you never felt like you were good enough to stand straight. 
And Father, we just release the sound of freedom in this room. Come on, we need every believer in this room to release the sound of freedom. Father, we release the sound of freedom in this room. Come on, stand up straight if that's you. We release the sound of freedom in this room. We release the sound of heaven in this room. The sound of revival breaking out in this room. Yeah. So Father, today, God, we thank you for the sound of freedom. God, we thank you for revival breaking out in this place. God, we thank you for revival breaking out in this region. God, we thank you for an outpouring of your spirit. God, we thank you for a fresh anointing as our pastor prophesied. An anointing that breaks the yoke. Come on, just one more time. If you're in the room and, and you need something broken off of your life, Isaiah says it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. There's something that's gonna touch you right now. You might feel something change in your back. You might feel a kidney disorder begin to shift. You might feel a knee pop. There's something shifting in the room. When we speak the name of Jesus, things begin to change. When we speak the name of Jesus, walls begin to fall. When we speak the name of Jesus, chains begin to fall off in Jesus' name. Father, we declare salvation in this room in Jesus' name. God, we declare comfort for the brokenhearted. And Father, we receive your reign in Jesus' name. Not just in the natural, but in the spiritual. God, we receive the reign of your revival in Jesus' name. The oil of your anointing in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hey, listen. I don't think that it's right to go out after God's done something like this in our lives without telling him thank you one more time, amen? So listen, we're gonna sing this next song. Karen's gonna lead us with everything you had. Would you give it 100% in this moment and thank God for what he's done? Come on, let's go. Let's thank Jesus tonight. Ready? You gonna dance with me? <laughs> All right, let's do it, let's go. <laughs> All right, with your hands, ready? Here we go.
place. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Yeah. Father, we thank you for what you've done in our hearts tonight. God, we just seal it in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for your freedom in this place, for the joy of the Lord, the oil of joy is in this place. And Father, we don't leave the same way that we came. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said, amen, amen. Come on, lift up one more shout of praise to God today. Amen. Hey, can we thank Karen and her team for coming this weekend? Amen, amen. Hey, listen, we will see you Sunday. You are dismissed. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you for worshiping with us.